everybody, my name is Jackie and I'm so excited you're here. Tonight we are talking all about name activities. So name activities for back to school for toddler, pre-K, K, TK, all the Ks, all the preschools, all the things. So I want you to tell me your favorite name activity, whether it be for back to school or something you do during the year, or maybe your favorite name activity that you use on bulletin boards, tell me your favorite name activity in the comments and we will just jump right in. So, oh, everything I'm gonna show you today, all the freebies and things are linked. So if you wanna grab any of these, make sure you go grab that link and you can download it after we're finished. So name activities, they're so, so powerful for kids because it's about them. It's their name, it's their identity, it's who they are. Um, names are so important and they're such a powerful, powerful tool in early childhood, especially to teach those letters, right? Um, everybody always asks, what order do I teach letters in? And I usually teach the letters that are the first letter in everybody's name first, because those are the most important to my three-year-olds. Those are the ones we're using all the time. So those are the ones we work on first. And then we kind of go from there. So these are the activities that I love and use all the time. And again, a lot of these are freebies, so they're linked. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. So a lot of the name activities I use, or I do all year long, are using these name cards. You guys, I would make, when I taught, I had probably four or five name card sets. So I do uppercase on one side. Well, this is not a good example. Uppercase on one side and lowercase on the other, because when my three-year-olds are learning their name, or maybe we're focusing on uppercase. Um, we are working on uppercase first, and then we move to lowercase, and we do uppercase first because developmentally, those are the um, types of lines that a three-year-old can make. A three-year-old cannot make an X yet. Their hands are just not that strong. They can't do those things yet. But it's not that we don't practice them, but we focus more on those simple lines first. So I always do uppercase first, and then we move to lowercase because that's what's developmentally appropriate. Um, and again, I do move them to lowercase um, when they're ready, when their hands are ready and when it's right for them. Um, so yeah, so that's why I do um, lowercase on one side, uppercase on the other. Um, I have sets that have magnets on them so I can use them um, on the board for activities. I have a set that's on a book ring. These, and again, all of them are uppercase one side, lowercase on the other. Um, I keep these at the art easel so that way um, they can use these as they're writing their name on their painting. I'm just going to put those down there um, just to hold those for a minute. And yeah, so I have a ton of these I use. I have some in buckets at the writing center so that way they can pull them out if they're writing their friend or they're writing their name on a card to their mom or their dad or whatever it is. Um, so I have them literally all over the room and I have a set by circle. And then I have a set with magnets that I used to. And then these are free on my blog, so um, or on my in my TBT store. So make sure you grab those. And again, make them once, save it, and print it out. Use it all year long. And again, make multiple sets because you're gonna love them and use them all the time. And then I also use them for activities. So in this magical name printable, there's also an activities ideas page. So this is my teacher binder. So this is what I used when I wrote, um, when I would lesson plan. Now I printed these activities for to a page, but you can print them off full page, but it's literally a ton of activities you can do with these name cards, a ton of different ways you can use them in the classroom. You guys look like, look how many, there's eight pages of ways you can use them in the classroom. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go through some of those and then the other, um, freebie that I'm going to show you. These are the the bigger name cards. There's a ton of ideas in there. And all I do, you guys, is I print them. Um, if it's multiple pages, I try and print them four to a page just to save room in my teacher binder. So that way, if I'm like, I need a name activity and my teacher brain is broken or tired, I have that in the literacy section of my teacher binder. So if I need a name activity, I can turn to the literacy section and then it's kind of like a cheat sheet of all my favorite um, activities and ideas. So that way it's right there um, for me to use. So let me show you some of my favorites. So I love writing 
um, for different purposes. And I do a lot of these name activities in the morning for morning table time. And I know a lot of teachers are getting away from morning work and doing like um, activity tubs or morning tubs. So these are perfect for those arrival activities. Um, and they're all great fine motor too. And it's a fun way to practice handwriting. So these are little like magnet boards. So like, let's say it's morning table time, right? Maybe I just have one of these at each spot and then I have all of these name cards just kind of like in the middle. And again, some of them, they, my, my students know that one side is uppercase, one side is lowercase. So if they want the lowercase side, they just flip it over and then they grab their pen and they would write the name. And then they can erase and then they can pick their friend's card because again, their names and their friends' names are the most important letters to them. So use that excitement and use that interest to get them writing and fun in different ways that are hands-on and multi-sensory. So these are from the dollar store. Um, I just have like a set of eight for table time that I use, so that's fun. And if your friends are not writing, this is a question I get a lot. So is a three-year-old gonna write every name or every letter correctly? No, like they may try to write some of the name letters and they may overlap. They may be kind of a scribble, um, but as long as they're starting to make those marks, that's the most important part. And then um, you can use other like small group time to teach the actual correct letter formation, but we just want them starting to start practicing writing names and writing letters. So these little like little magnet boards are great. I also love chalkboards. So this is like a DIY chalkboard I made. I show you guys these all the time. I made these like, 10 years ago and they are still working. These are trays from the Dollar Tree. I used some chalkboard paint I had from a Leftover Craft Pod Direct. The um, tutorial on how to make these is on my blog. So all you do is sand the like fancy Dollar Store tray <laughs> and then put chalkboard paint on. I did the ribbons for fun. And then I have just a cup of cut up chalk. And I love these because they fit on, the, their names fit on there. So then they can practice writing their name, or again, writing their friend's name. And then I love using chalk because it's broken, so it's little pieces, so they can't use that fisted grasp because it's not very long, so they have to use um, more of that um, the pincer grasp or the, um, the tripod grasp, and they can write in rainbow with the chalk. You can also make the chalk wet if you want, um, but I usually just keep like this little, these are like little party cups for like snack cups for like birthday parties. Um, I love using these for little um, like containers because they're what, like five for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then I break some chalk and put it in there. And now we got a fun way to write their name. And then you can either put a um, pom-pom on the end of a clothespin and they can erase. And why would I do that, you ask? because they have to hold it kind of like pencil. So fun. And then, um, it is a little dusty, but it's so much fun. And kids love chalkboards because again, they're not in the classrooms anymore because you know, it's not 1970. <laughs> and um, yeah, I love having also dry erase out. This is another fun option. Again, just have these name cards out on in the middle of the desk and have your whiteboards out. These are just the Amazon dry erase markers. I love them because they're all different colors and kids love colors and colors make everything more fun, but they can take their name card, they can put it on their magnet board. And these magnet boards are the ones that like high school kids put in their lockers. Um, they, I got them on clearance one year and I've used them ever since. So again, nothing fancy. And then they can erase, I forgot my eraser. <laughs> um, but these are like the Amazon basic dry erase markers and look at all the beautiful colors. They're so pretty. Um, yeah, but they can write their name. They can also like rainbow write it. So write it in one, rainbow write is when you write it in one color and then they write it in another color. And they don't have to necessarily go in rainbow order. Um, it's always really good to do rainbow writing. Like you can write it in yellow and then they can trace it over and over and over again. Um, that's another great um, use of rainbow writing and to get them tracing and writing the letters appropriately. And then they would erase and pick a new name. So we got dry erase boards, we got these little boards. Um, another, so like different, 
using different surfaces for names just makes them more excited to write their names. Another fun name activity is to take, again, these little name cards. And then what you're gonna do is you're either gonna grab some letter close pins. Now, you can buy these in the Target dollar spot. You totally can. Or you can grab some clothes pins and you can write letters on them. And that works too. Kids don't need fancy. They just need fun and hands-on. So you can use fancy clothes pins or DIY clothes, DIY clothes pins. It doesn't matter as long as it's fun and hands-on. And again, if you're excited, they're excited. You can also put little stickers on the clothes pins to make it even more fun. But I just do uppercase on one side, lowercase on the other. So uppercase for their first part of their name. And then, of course I can't find another letter. Oh, here we go. And then he can do, flip it over and do the U in lowercase for his name. And again, so cheap, so easy. And every time they use clothes pins, they are making those fingers strong. So it's also a great fine motor activity. But if you are doing these type of hands-on activities in the morning instead of morning work, they're getting their hands going, they're getting their brain going, and they're starting um, the day with an active activity. And hopefully they're talking to each other and say, oh my gosh, there's my name. Oh, did you make, I made your name. Oh, look, your name has an E, like my name has an E. My E's at the end, where's your E? My E is kind of towards the end, but not on the very end. Um, so they're gonna be talking about letters and having conversations about um, all of building all that oral language. So, so much fun. And again, Fancy, not DIY. The kids love both ways equally. Um, so that's another fun thing you can do. I also love using these name cards and you guys know I love my stamps, right? So here are just some stamps I bought off of Amazon. Now, sometimes rubber stamps are messy, right? Especially during back to school. So if you wanna make it hands-on a really fun activity you can do. Again, uppercase or lowercase. You can, I love using um, kinetic sand and putting it in a pencil box because this is kind of like a, um, it's like a little, a little tray at the top. So what they would do is then they want, you want to have them make it nice, nice and flat. And what are they doing here? They're using their shoulders to press which is building all of that upper upper arm and shoulder strength that they need to write. And when they're making it flat, what are they doing? They're using all those fingers and build, making them, giving themselves, or um, building those um, strong hands and bodies. So J, whoops, U, and they would finish it. But even if it, like the, you can tell these have like a little bit of blue ink on them, that's okay. All that matters is that they're practicing that name. And again, they can practice their name. And then once they do their name, they can practice a friend's name too. So, because they do love their friends and their friends' names. So, it's a very, very powerful tool to use their names to make letters. So, can I stand in pencil boxes? And you have a fun name writing activity. Now, they can also, there it is, okay, sorry. You can have them grab an actual pencil and they can write in the sand. And let, hold on, let me see if you can hear the sound. It's really soothing to write in the kinetic sand. So have them smash, 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 smash. And then they can write their name in the kinetic sand. And it's giving them um, some sensory input. It's giving them, letting them write their name in a really fun way. Now, are they gonna, if, especially if they have a long name, are they gonna be able to fit it? No, nope, probably not. So are there, is their name gonna be kind of all over? Probably, but you know what, that's okay. All that matters is that they're practicing their name and we're building those fine muscles, fine motor muscles. So they can use stamps or pencils and they can write in the kinetic sand. So that is another fun one to do too. And then if you love that one, you can also, here's, let me grab this over here. <laughs> Take, again, same name cards. And you guys look, do you guys see how many activities 
you can do by just literally putting these name cards on the table. And I, you may want to give everybody like a tray. Like I have these trays from Amazon. They're great. Um, so if they're doing like a messy activity, have the trays out, have all the name cards in the middle, and then have a, a Play-Doh on each tray. Let me get this out of the way. And then, oh, I needed those. <laughs> you can have these kind of in the middle, or you can spill them in the middle, whatever works, you know. <laughs> and then what they can do is they can use the Play-Doh, and then you're gonna flatten it out. So this one I I used this activity for, um, I think an Instagram Live or something, and it dried. <laughs> do you see how cool that is? So they did their name and they stamped it, with the stamps in the Play-Doh. But you, isn't that so cool how you can see all the letters? So we're just gonna pretend like I, I got my Play-Doh out and I smashed it and then they would use their name card and then they would stamp in the Play-Doh. Again, we're just doing a lot of fun name games in super fun ways. Now, if your students already know their names, you could totally use any like vocabulary cards that you have related to a theme. You could do sight word cards. Um, again, you, I say these are name activities, but you can use this for vocabulary words or um, sight words. So that's another fun one too, doing Play-Doh and stamps. So fun. And again, it's hands-on, building those fine motor muscles. Great for a, um, I love doing these for like a morning, morning table time activity because it's pretty independent. Um, you can also do it for small group and then you can um, be asking them questions and talking more about letter formation and having them trace with their finger and things like that too. So, and we're just going to keep on going. So those are some fun ideas to use with these name cards. Oh, and then another, and again, make sure you have a bucket of these in at your writing center because they will write their friends letters and they will write their name at the bottom. And again, we just wanna get them writing and get them excited about words and letters and their names. Um, so keep a bucket of these at your writing center because they will use them. Oh, you could also use these um, with like a sand tray. I like doing name sand trays. I forgot to bring one over here for um, this tonight, but make get a big cookie sheet and put some sand or um, sprinkles or whatever it is in it and then they can write their name on the bigger surface. So just use like a big cookie sheet and make a big giant sand tray. Okay, so that is a fun one. Or they could do shaving cream too, which is writing in shaving cream is always, always so much fun. So we have these name cards, which are, again, so, so much fun. So again, these are those are free on my blog. So grab them, print them, have a blast. The other set of name cards on my blog look like this. So again, I do uppercase and lowercase, and then there is a hollow font as well. So there is a colored in font and a hollow font. All of my stuff in my classroom was always color coded. So Charlie, everything of his was his was blue. His name tag was blue. His question of the day tag was blue. His fine motor journal was blue. All of his stuff was blue. Colton, if he was green for this, he would be green on his cubbies because some kiddos can't recognize their name when they come to your classroom. So maybe if you have these out, let's say you have these at all the different spots for the, the morning time activity. Let me grab my tray. So let's say they all come in and you have the name cards out um, with, let's say you have a whole bunch of manipulatives they can use to cover their names. So they're, your friends are the little little um, the little friends who are gonna walk around and they're gonna try and find their name. Well, these are great because they have their pictures on them. Now these big ones do not. So Colton would walk around and say, is that my name? And one way students start recognizing their name is they notice that first letter right. So he's gonna know my name is green and it has a C in the front. So he's gonna walk around the table and try and find the green name tag with the C that's the first step to starting to recognize his name. So he's using that. So I always use colors and color code everything to help. And then he'll start to, um, once he learns all the letters in his name, then you won't need the colors anymore. But 
it's just it's just a great visual support um, for your little for little friends. Oh, okay. So I, I'm gonna show you these, and then I have a couple more things too. So that aren't name cards. <laughs> um, so we have again. I do I do uppercase. I make a lowercase set. So use the set that works for you, or maybe whatever you're working on. Now you can build. I always make a set that is in the black like solid line and then I make a set that is in the hollow line so that way those they can trace like these they could um, trace with like dry erase markers and they could write on them um, and then I like to use the filled in font so that way if they want to build their name with manipulatives on them and oh these little containers are from the dollar store by the way um, so they can build their name with mini erasers or whatever manipulative you have on hand that day. Um, these little pom-poms are from Hobby Lobby. These are really fun to build your name with. Um, you can also build your name with, let me put these back in my little container. You can also do little eyeballs. Again, they don't have to be super expensive manipulatives. They can just be something fun, that small. And again, when they're picking these up, they're using the, that pincer grasp. And they're gonna be moving them around and sliding them with their fingers. Both of their hands are gonna be working together. Maybe this hand is holding the paper and this hand is moving the manipulative. So that's also working on hand-eye coordination and bilateral integration, both hands, um, both sides working together, doing all the things. So eyeballs, super simple. And that's a super, um, it's also a super cheap, <laughs> I'm spilling everything like super cheap manipulative. And they, and um, the eyeballs too that are different colors, like the pink and green eyeballs, those are really fun too. I also love bingo chips. And again, I get a lot of this stuff just from Amazon. And I have a lot of manipulatives because I, I like to go to the dollar store and I've just collected all of these things all <laughs> during my teaching career. So I have quite a lot. But one thing I love about bingo chips is once they make their whole name, listen, they can use the magnetic wand to clean their name up. And then that makes it so much fun. It's kind of like a reward at the end. So they make their name and then let's say, we're just gonna pretend I made the, their whole name. Like it, it's all perfect on there, just pretend. And then listen. Like so much fun to just, and then they have to get all of them off. So again, super fun, simple name activity. I mean, how much fun would your friends, would um, the friends in your class have if they came in, each one of them had their name out and there were just um, some cups of bingo chips and they each had a magnet on their tray. That would be a really fun way to get their day started. Again, get them moving and active and engaged and having an absolute blast. Now, you can also, I love these cards because you can use them all year long. You can just change the manipulative. So here's some candy corn. And I will tell you my trick <laughs> to candy. Uh, these are from like two years ago. I keep candy for several years because it gets hard as a rock and um, it's easier to manipulate when it's not crumbling and all of that all over the place. So they can make your name with manipulatives to match your theme or you can use food if you're allowed to use food. Um, but again, it's just another fun way to make their name. And again, build all of that fine motor and they could all, you could also too always have a dry erase marker out so that way they can trace their name and they can build it. So that way they have kind of two options. But this will work many times during the year. So you could put this out at during back to school with magnet chips. And then when it's fall, put out candy corn. And then when you're doing, I don't know, put out Cheerios or um, maybe during the holidays, put out um, those little holiday mini erasers. Or if you're doing um, construction, put out those little rocks from the Dollar Tree. So change it up. And again, same activity. And if you make a class set, 
you prep it once and you can use it all year long. And then I usually send these home with the kit with um, all the kids at the end of the year. So that way they can use them at home um, after they're finished in my class. So, so, so much fun. I love these big cards. Now, I also, in my writing center, I also keep a tub of name cards in dry erase packets. And I have that their uppercase name at the top and lowercase name at the bottom. Again, everything is color coded. Josephine is purple all over my classroom. Um, and then I have just a whole bunch of markers in the bottom. And this is by far their favorite and it's over multiple years. So I think I started using these like Mm, seven years ago maybe maybe longer um probably probably right around seven years ago it is the most used name activity in my classroom every single year again not teaching this year but out of the seven years i've used these and put these out the most used name activity and you guys it gets a um a writing tool in their hand you can also use um skinny dry erase markers if you would rather use that um, but it is the most used name activity in my classroom every year, hands down. Kids will spend a long time <laughs> writing their name or they will have multiple ones spread out. Um, like maybe they'll have Josephine and Jude and Maddie will be over here and then the next one will be over here and they will have all of them spread out and they will have the name written and they'll have it written in like all of the colors. I have multiple colors out. Um, but again, this is a must for any classroom. I obviously teach them how to use a dry erase marker, so maybe not don't have it out the first week. But once you introduce these, maybe at small group or circle, literally have them out because it is again, hands down, top name activity, name writing activity I have in my classroom since I started using these probably like seven years ago. So this is a must. And I love it because the um the, the dry erase pockets, they match, um, they match their name color. And then also too, if, um, this is a great activity to pull out for table time. Um, if maybe like sometimes like, oh my gosh, I didn't get to finish writing my name, you know, and it's time to clean up for centers or something. Say, oh my gosh, I will put these out for table time tomorrow morning and then use them for table time too. And then it kind of reminds some of the friends who haven't used them in a minute that these are in the writing center because I love using things that are in my classroom centers for morning table time. It's kind of like a reminder like, oh yeah, that's in the library center. Don't forget, you can use that um, during open choice centers, um, which is all of my centers are open choice, all my center times. Um, I do small group and that's when I pick what the kids are doing and table time I pick what's at on the table. So make a set of these. Put them in your writing center. It will it will be worth it, I promise. All right, so you can also make a, like you can print these out on white paper and then use these too. And then guess what? These you can put in their portfolios or use um, send home, whatever you want. So they can rainbow write it. This is just with regular markers. They can use stickers. You can copy it on colored paper. You can have them use dot markers. You can have them paint their name with Q-tips. I have um, mixed it up for the season too. So like in the winter, make their name on like blue paper. Obviously you would not want this one laminated, but print their names on blue paper. Cause again, make it once, type it once, and then you have it all year. And then they can write it in the snow and just use white paint. That's so much fun. And again, you prep it once, or maybe you have to cut it up um, if you're, you know, using the paper ones for a different activity. And you can use it multiple times all year long. You can also make name puzzles with these. So I have their name on the outside. And then they have to put their name back together. I'm trying to do it upside down. But you get the point. <laughs> Um, so they put their name back together. You can also, um, I didn't in this one, but make the name card and have it so they can make it on top. 
okay? So that way, if they need a little bit more help, or you can make it Velcro to their name, so that way it kind of matches, and they're matching if they're at a lower level, or maybe they're just three, <laughs> and they're just learning their name. And I just keep it in an envelope. You can laminate the name puzzles and laminate the envelope, and then just um, Expo knife, cut it open, so that way they don't get ripped, and you can use them all year long. Again, this name card is a freebie. It's a freebie in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. So make sure you go grab it after, after you're done um, watching. And again, all the links are um, posted so you can grab it. Okay, so we got, we talked about these magical name cards and some activities to do with them. We talked about these magical name cards and activities you can do with them. And then here are some other activities you can do that don't involve name cards. So I, um, it's fun at the beginning of the year to make, these are like mini name sensory tubes for each friend. So what they do is they find the letter beads that make their name. I like to put their name in stickers and then add tape um, on the outside. So that way they always, um, if they don't know the letters in their name yet, there's, there's a little bit of help. And then they grab like three or four mini erasers and then fill it halfway with rice and then shake, shake, shake. And now they each have their own name tube. If you go to my Amazon list, um, these tubes are in the sensory um, category list. So if you want these, these are great. And then again, you can send them home at the end of the year or you can keep them and use them again um, the following year. Um, Cause you know, buying things every year does get, it gets a little bit expensive. But if you don't wanna do name tubes, totally fine. I got another idea for you. You can make mini sensory name kits. So I know a lot of us did um, mini sensory bins during COVID, right? So what you can do is just grab some pencil boxes, put whatever filler you want inside. So this one has colored rice, some beans, some pom-poms. Again, I love these tubes for mini sensory bins. This is a formula scoop I kept from when my kids um, used to be on formula, you know, my 10 year old. Okay, so I keep things. And like everybody else, I have, we teachers hoard all the things, right? Um, write their names on a sentence strip. Again, doesn't have to be laminated all the time. Doesn't have to be fancy. Write their name on a sentence strip. And then put the letters in. Now, you can do this a couple ways. You can do, you can use magnet letters. So have them help you and they can find all, we're just gonna say I found all the letters in their name. But using magnet letter, or magnets is fun, because then they can use the magnet wands inside the sensory bin, and they can find the letters, and then they can match them. Or maybe they wanna put the letters in the tube, and maybe they just wanna fill it up, and that's okay too. Obviously, make sure your letters fit in if you're using the tube. Um, they don't get stuck. You can also use letter beads. These are some from Learning Resources. Or um, you can, again, use these letter beads. These are from, I want to say, Walmart. So we're just going to pretend that this says Austin. And then you can have those letter beads in the mini sensory bin. Here's, or you can make it to match. Um, oh, these are on um, the little labels, and I have them on Velcro. Well, I had them on Velcro. <laughs> I guess it came off. But anyways, it's taped on right now. Um, these are in my Teacher's Pay Teacher Store. They're editable. Um, you can also make it match to each student's, make it match your learning theme, or you can make it match um, the, your student's interest. So let's say this friend really loves Construction, I love using plastic shot glasses in mini sensory bins too. And then instead of using beads, I got these little rocks from the dollar store and I wrote the letters and his name on the little rocks. So he has to find the rocks and make his name. This one is really fun and these are just little noodles. I forgot what kind they're called, but these are just noodles that I dyed and there's some beads in there. I did put some pipe cleaners in so they can, um, these noodles are great because they can also lace them if they get bored with doing the name. And then I put a little dump truck in there so they can put their name in the dump truck if they want. They can put the beads in the dump truck and they can dump it out. But again, a fun hands-on name activity. Which do you think your students will be most engaged in? 
a name activity like this or a worksheet. Probably this one, right? And guess what else? You're gonna have less problem behaviors because your kiddos are having a ton of fun learning through play and all these fun hands-on games you're doing. So over the summer, I released a name activity and I wanna show you guys a couple ways you can use it. So this one's in my Teachers Pay Teacher Store too. So there's a couple ways you can use it. So it's a name book. It's in, um, this over here. Sorry guys. <laughs> it's, um, it's editable. So you put, um, there's I think four files in it and it depends on the length of the name. So, um, what you're going to do is, um, like it says like names with letters zero or, you know, like one, two, four and put those names in and it's for spacing because um, the way you have to do it in Adobe, I had to make different files to make the names bigger on some and smaller on others. So you can do it, you can print it, so that way it's a name book like this, or you can bind it, and it's okay if you have two on a page. But let me show you all the pages. So um, my name book, and then they have to tap each letter and say the name, and then they can trace it. And again, if you put it in, this is just dry erase packets on some rings. So they would trace it with the dry erase marker and then they would rainbow write it with the dry erase marker. Or if you're using a paper copy, they would just use markers. And then they can dot it. So if you wanna use the paper copy, you can use the Q-tip. And again, you could just have this page out, but then they just do the dots and they're dotting their name or they could use a q-tip and um they could paint it this one that says i can collage my name so they would use uh let me see find it okay i don't have that one printed but they can use i have collage so okay hold on sorry so i just these are a whole bunch of little squares i have them sorted by color and just a cupcake container um they could collage it if you did the paper copy and they could glue it on, or if you have it in like a dry erase type book, they can use any manipulative you want and they can create a collage that way with their name and then wipe it clean. This one, they have to find their letters. So they would mark them, mark all the letters that they are in their name. And then this one they would type. So they would push, on the letters that, that are in their name. And then this one's I can sign my name and then I can write my name so they would write it independently down there. And then I can build my name with beads. So these are more hands-on towards the end. So let me show you what I would do. I probably wouldn't keep these in this book per se. I would keep the first part and keep it dry erased so that way we can use it, whoops, over and over and over again and I don't have to reprint it, right? But the second part, or you can make the paper copy. But what you can do is make kind of like morning tubs. So one tub, maybe they come in, or maybe you could have this add um, in the in the library center. So you would have this one says, "I can make my name with small treasures." And again, I have everything color coded in my classroom, so their name strips would be color coded. And maybe I would have. <clears throat> the manipulatives in there that they would use. Or maybe I would switch it out depending on what we're learning about. Maybe we're using mini erasers or maybe it's candy corn, whatever it is. So that would be one name tub. Another name tub would be, I can build my name with beads. So they would have all of these. And then I would have some beads. So you can use these kind of beads. You can use these letter beads. Again, use whatever letter beads you have in your classroom. If I don't have any in here. And then I would have, oh my gosh, I almost spilled the whole thing. I would have a whole bunch of pipe cleaners so that way they can lace their name on the pipe cleaner. And again, once they make their name, they can totally, um, make their friend's name too. That's one thing I love about name tubs. They are just as interested in their friend's name, well, almost as much interested in their friend's name 
as they are there. So they would be making their name with beads. You'd probably need a full pipe cleaner though. I just forgot to throw those in. So that's another one. And then this one is pattern blocks. So this one's a little bit trickier because as you can see, it is smaller. So they would have to build their name kind of on the table. So they would have to look at the shapes that are on here. And then they would have to flip and move the shapes to create their name. Now, as you can see, I'm also sneaking in some math standards into this because they are having to flip and make their name using all of these shapes. So, which is one of the um, standards. So we got C for Clara. So again, this is trickier. So this would probably be too tricky for um, preschool students at the beginning of the year, beginning of the year, but maybe they could do it by the end or, um, but pre um, kindergarten friends, this would be perfect for you guys. So again, just have this in your center with some pattern blocks. Another fun one, which is a tried and true are the dough names, right? So they would, you would have all the name cards and again, they can be color coded. You can do uppercase, you can do lowercase. You, the way you type it in is the way it's gonna print out. So they could have this in there. And you know what would be really fun is for have these tape these at different tables for morning bins. Maybe you're maybe um instead of doing like a STEM morning bin, maybe for um a whole week you guys are doing name bins. Um and then we also have Legos. So these have recently been at the Dollar Tree, which is amazing. The bigger boards, or you can get these smaller boards at the Dollar Tree. And then hiding under all these Legos are their names building with Legos. And again, they're not gonna be big enough to build on the nameplate. So they would have to build it on the board. And they can make it, if they don't have to be exactly the same as how it is on here. So we got an H and then they would finish and make the rest. And again, you could use these big boards or smaller boards. You could also glue two of these together. So, and I've seen teachers just take the same color, hot glue them together and then tape, tape the back. So that way they're kind of longer for, really perfect for name making. So you can make your name with Legos. <laughs> and then this one is sticks. I love this one. So they can make their name with sticks. Again, you can choose to do uppercase or lowercase, whatever you want to do. So they are going to use this, oh, can't see it. So they are going to make their name or their friend's name with the short sticks and the bigger sticks. These are in the craft section at like a craft store like Michael's right next to the popsicle sticks. Or you can get them on Amazon. <laughs> Amazon is so fast. So make name bins for your literacy centers or for um, morning tubs. Um, so that would be a really fun um, activity to do. And then I have two more activities I want, name activities I want to share with you. So a tried and true, one that we all love, but I think sometimes we forget about the ones that are tried and trues are name art. So this one, I literally took a full piece of paper and I folded it in half and you would cut it. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you how I made, made it so big. And then you, either they write their name or you write their name. And then they, I love using um, cupcake little bins for um, cut up like collage materials. And then they, so they would put glue on it and then they would use the paper to make their name. And then these make a great bulletin board. Um, and or you can put these in their portfolio or you can send them home with them. Um, but this is a really fun, you can use it to decorate your classroom um, or the hallway. Um, these are, a name art is really fun. And then I think, um, so pretend that this is paint. So what you would do, I wanted to make an example before we got started and I forgot. So what you would do is you would write your name. Here's my marker. So let's, well, that marker doesn't work. <laughs> okay. 
Where's the mother? Oh, found it. Okay. So you write their, their name. I'll do mine. Again, you can write it or they can write it. And then what you would do is take a pom-pom and put it on the end of a clothespin. And then they can dip it in paint and then they can stamp their name that way. So if this, if gluing these squares on is too much work, like if you teach three-year-olds, they can still make name art, but make it a simpler and shorter process because their attention span is shorter and they don't have as great fine motor as, you know, um, pre-K and kinder. Take a pom-pom, put it on the end of a clothespin because look, still making those fingers nice and strong. And then they would dip it in the paint. Again, we're pretending paint is in here. <laughs> dip it in the paint and they would stamp their name and then they could do the next letter and they could do another letter and then you would have gorgeous name art that was in paint and using little pom-poms and it's not as messy because well it shouldn't be as messy unless they start finger painting so which happens so we have name art and then my last activity for you guys this is another fun one so they're name puzzles but it also has their picture on them. So they would have to match, again, everything in my class is color coded. So again, I would color code these two. But this is also really um, fun to do at the beginning of the year as they're learning their friends' names and they're learning um, faces and names. Um, but these are just little Avery stickers that I have. And I put them on a square and put their picture on them. So at the beginning of the year, what I do is I take a headshot of them and then I take a full body shot and then I use them for projects like this all year long. So those are some fun name activities for back to school. I hope you guys loved all of them. Now don't forget, after this video, go grab this name card freebie in my store and then go grab this name card freebie and then grab the name books, okay? So go grab all the things after we're done. And yeah, and then I will see you guys next week, um, 7 p.m. Central Time. And I hope you guys have a great day. Enjoy, your, enjoy um, teaching tomorrow or the next time you teach if, it's, if you're watching this on your off day. Um, so yeah, so you guys have an awesome night and I will talk to you guys soon, bye.